Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. My tractor desperately needs a new seat, but Kubota wants a whole lot of money for a new one. Today, I'm going to show you how I found a suitable substitute for about one-third the price and show you how to install it. Hey, welcome back to The Garage, and if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So my Kubota L3830 is about 20 years old, and the seat has, well, started falling apart. Now, it all started off when the seat started developing these cracks and splits in the vinyl. And I really didn't think about it at the time, it really didn't bother me, but what it was allowing to happen was that dew and rain were going down through the cracks, soaking the cushion, and the result was the entire understructure here. I'm not sure how clear you can see this, but it is just rusted to pieces, and it's just falling apart. And these little points here have become pretty jagged and sharp, and I am virtually always wearing shorts when I'm using the tractor, yeah, especially, you know, in this Florida heat. And so that, uh, it, well, it hurts. It gets kind of sharp and, and painful. Also, the worst part is that it's become so uh, wobbly is that when you kind of, if you lean over this way, the entire seat tilts and triggers the safety switch and cuts the engine off. I thought there was a problem with the switch or a problem with the tractor for a while until I figured out all it was was just the, uh, the seat was coming apart. This Kubota tractor seat is a little different from a lot that I see because it's pivoted here on the front edge, which allows it to flip up and onto the, uh, the steering wheel. And it leaves the suspension, the spring-loaded suspension system, down here on the deck. And notice the way that this deck, I'm not sure you can really see it, this deck is not level. That deck slopes down, which uh, causes some problems. So once I figured out I needed a new seat, I went and checked out Messix.com to see if they had any and what the price might be. And uh, their uh, website's a little bit difficult to navigate, in my opinion, but overall a good site and a good company. The only problem with Messix is their YouTube videos. Now, the videos themselves are fine, uh, very informative, very well done. The problem is that stupid theme song gets stuck in your head for days. Six, a helping hand with your land. You're welcome. Navigated through the site. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. So I know what I know what you're thinking. That's where the whole seat, that's the suspension, the seat belts, everything. Nope. Just for the seat with the armrest, the bottom, the back, the cushion, just the part that flips forward, $738. The suspension underneath, the spring suspension, that's another $735. Heck, the seat belts alone are $145. So if you were to replace the entire thing, you'd be talking about over $1,600. Now, I'm not blaming Messix or saying that Messix is trying to rip you off. I'm sure that Kubota is charging them a hefty wholesale price for those genuine Kubota parts. And, uh, you know, like I said, that's pretty pricey. Now you may be saying, well, just don't buy the whole seat, just buy the seat cushion and this piece under here. How much could that be? Well, the answer to that question is $500. That's right, 500 bucks just for those two components. So 
yeah, you could cut the price, but that's still pretty pricey to me. So I started looking around for an alternative. And the problem is the way the seat is built with those two front pivot points that let the seat just flip forward, that's just kind of a weird thing. I mean, I couldn't find seats that would fit that. Uh, I don't know, maybe there were adapters or something, but I sure couldn't find anything that was going to fit this tractor easily. So I thought, okay, I'll look at getting a different seat with its own suspension system. If I end up spending $750, that's a really nice seat with a really good spring suspension under it. The problem is none of them would fit. Remember that sloped base under the seat? Well, because of that, the suspension has to have a level top and a sloped bottom where it bolts on. Normal suspensions aren't built that way. I've never seen a suspension that would fit this, a third party suspension that would fit it. That suspension I'm guessing could only be gotten from Kubota. So now I'm looking at if I wanna use a regular suspension seat with its own suspension, I'm gonna to have to build a framework underneath there, uh, sort of a triangular frame to give it a level point to mount to. Uh, at this point, this is more work than I wanna do. So I posted the question to the ever helpful Kubota forum on Facebook, and within a few minutes, I had my answer. Seatwarehouse.com. That's seat-warehouse.com. Great company. Uh, their website is a, is a little tricky to navigate, but I did find two seats specifically listed for the Kubota L3830. And I couldn't really see the difference. There wasn't much of a price difference, maybe $15, I think. But I did, couldn't tell what the real difference between them was. I emailed the company, and within, uh, within a one business day, definitely, I had a very good explanation of the difference between the two. Basically, one was made all of all plastic, and the other one had metal parts. And the one that was all plastic, he said, would be a little more comfortable. Now... Normally, I'd be like, okay, I want the one that has metal components, but after seeing what happened to the metal components in this seat, I'm okay with all plastic. I ended up paying like $265, $275, including shipping, and it took about a week to get here. It just arrived. I'm ready to put it in, and so let's go unbox it. These are packs. Let's see. What's this? Huh. I thought that was just a... um like a spacer to provide padding, but it's got something in it. I'll check that in a minute. Yeah, should see here. All right. First impression, seat is decent enough. Nothing spectacular. Um, oh, oh, okay. What is that? Looks like that's some sort of a a built-in safety switch. Or honestly, I I don't know what that is. I suppose that's what it could be. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like there is a safety switch built into the seat. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not because the the Kubota already has its own built-in safety switch. Here's the adapter that lets it fit the Kubota that has the two ears that bolt on and provide the pivot point. A couple rubber bumpers. Yeah, yeah, it looks, uh, looks fairly decent. Water drain hole here. Overall, I'm happy. Okay, so let's see what this thing is. Oh, well, this is a surprise. I did not realize it came with arms. It looks like they fold up and down. Well, th this is a pleasant surprise. So somehow, I had the idea this thing came with no arms, and I was thinking, well, I can certainly live without armrests. And uh, looks like hardware to attach said armrests and ah assembly instructions we don't need that 
<laughs> All right, let's install this thing. We're gonna start off by putting the arms on the seat. Now, the way this works is that this metal frame bolts on or screws on to the plastic shell here, which to be honest, I wasn't real thrilled with that idea, the idea that bolting these things to just the plastic shell. But then I really started checking on it and reaching in here and this shell is really, ah, substantially thick. I mean, some parts of it are a good eighth to maybe a quarter of an inch thick. So this is not, um, this is not some little weenie piece of plastic. So I think I'm comfortable with it. And well, we'll see what happens. So the way this works is you use these little things called clip nuts, or I've always heard them called clip nuts. It's a little metal clip. And on one side, it has sort of a nut thing molded or uh, pressed into it. And that's what these big lag screw sort of things tie into and hold the whole thing together. So it's not just the plastic holding it. It's really this clip nut is clamping around the plastic, which is better, much better than just running this into plastic. So you make sure you've got the nut part on the inside of the plastic here. And there are three holes pre-drilled in the seat, so it's easy to see where they go. Just put them on and line them up with the pre-drilled holes. The seat cushion pushes out of the way pretty easily. And there's actually little pockets molded into the inside of the plastic seat shell that help locate the proper spot for them to go. I think I'm going to preset these, just run them in and put it, bring them back out to go ahead and get the hole enlarged correctly. If you're in the market for a really good cordless impact driver, this DeWalt uh, 20 volt max, I will Let's see, DCF787. I'll give you a link in the um, description below the video. I've been using this for a couple of years now. Absolutely wonderful. I, I love this thing. It's a really, really good, really well-made tool. Boy. Ooh, that got hot. I can imagine what a pain that will be trying to run it in just using a regular uh, driver. There we go. Okay. Okay. That is really, really well attached. Okay, seems well attached. Yep, I think we're good to go. All right, so I think the lesson learned there is that when you're, before you put the arm up there, go ahead and run the screw into each hole just a little bit. Makes it a lot easier to locate when you're trying to put the screw in for real. One final task we have to do is adjust how difficult these arms are to lift and lower, and you do that by adjusting a bolt here at the pivot point. 
Uh, uses a 16 and a 17 millimeter wrench. You just loosen it up or tighten it. That seems, well, let's see, that's, that's very loose up there. And then it tightens up. I'm gonna tighten that just a hair. Okay, that's good. And we'll do the same on the other one. Because this one seemed a lot tighter. Tighten it back up a bit. Okay, that seems fine. Here you're looking from the back of the tractor. This is the bottom of the seat. I've flipped it up and the backrest is uh, sitting up on top of the steering wheel. You can see the two pivot points here. Here's one bolt here and the other bolt is right over here. And if I, if I wiggle this, you can see what bad shape that other pivot point is in. It's just, it's just coming apart. All right, so I'm gonna grab the back. The, the bolt is here and it goes through the two pivot ears and there's a nut back here. I'm going to get hold of the nut with this end wrench and then use the impact driver to remove this bolt. Easy enough. Let's see, that feels like it's actually a captive nut. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it is a captive nut under there. All right, go get the other one. we go. All right. I'm thinking this thing's going to be kind of heavy. Oh God, I was right. Ugh. I cleaned up the suspension some, wiped it down with some of this Osfo uh, rust neutralizer. I bought several bottles of this years ago, gone through a bunch of it. Really good stuff, really effective at neutralizing rust, converting it over to a, a non-reactive surface that you can paint it or just, you know, leave it as is just to stop the rust. Um, I'll give you a link to the description. I'll give you a link in the description of the video down below. Now there are times when putting on Osfo is not truly um, practical. Uh, if you're getting into a tight area, in those cases, I really like using this Loctite Extend Rust Neutralizer. It's an aerosol, really easy to use. Um, I, not sure if you can get this on Amazon or where you can get it from. I'll check on that. And if you can buy it on Amazon, I'll give you a link in the description down below also. One thing to notice here is this is the safety switch that's built into the tractor uh, suspension. And this is the little arm that triggers. You, this arm pushes down when you've got weight on the seat. And if you flip the seat up or you, you know, get up off the seat, it lifts up and triggers the safety switch. Now, I was just looking at the seat, and it looks like it has a bar on it, on the bottom, mounted specifically to come down and trigger this switch. And uh, I think that's how it lines up. We'll see when we get the thing on. I've got the new seat back up on here. It was definitely easier to get on here than it was to get the old one off. It, it, this isn't a whole lot lighter, but it is significantly noticeably lighter. But one tricky bit's going to be holding the seat with one hand while I get the bolt in and started with the other. This is definitely would be, this would definitely be easier as a two person job. Uh, the, I was looking here, the, um, the ear here seems to be perfectly made. The shoulder bolt fits exactly right. So as long as it lines up into the right width, we should be ready to go. Let's give this a try. Okay, this, this isn't going to be so bad. Famous last words. As I can't get... Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's see. I guess we can just go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, bolt number two. Yep. As promised, seems to be a perfect fit. Trying to get it lined up with that shoulder bolt. It's a bit of a pain here. There. Okay. Now, here's the bar I was talking about. 
Let's see how that's. Yep. That's exactly what that's for. That bar comes down right on the safety switch and triggers it. Now, one thing I'm not super keen on is that there is no reinforced area for these springs to hit. They're just hitting right here, plain old plastic. We'll see, may not be an issue whatsoever. And the rubber bumpers, the rubber bumpers are hitting these reinforced points. Uh, you really can't see them in this shop. There's two reinforced plates here for those to hit. And they're lining up perfectly on those. So, yeah, yep. I'm ready to give this a try. My goodness, that looks about 150,000% better than the old one. That's a nice looking seat. I'm pretty happy. Hmm, well, but let's see how it feels to sit in it. Alrighty. That feels pretty good. Yeah. It's not as soft as I thought it was going to be, uh, which is a good thing I didn't get the other one if it wasn't even this soft. So, no, it feels good, actually. Um, the lower back support, the lumbar support, is much better than the original seat. Now, one thing that... Um, seat warehouse stressed me was that this is a solid shell and so the back tilt the, the tilt of the back is not adjustable to be honest i've owned this tractor for almost 20 years i never realized the back was adjustable on the old seat so no loss there so yeah overall i think it's a good seat and it's certainly a great deal at 250 bucks as always, everybody, thanks for joining me today, and thank you for liking and sharing my videos. Make sure you go down there and click on that like button down there and let YouTube know that you enjoy what I'm doing. Also, thank you to all my subscribers, but especially to the 100 of you who have subscribed in the last month alone. That's very exciting. When I looked a little while ago, we were at 890 subscribers, almost at 900 and approaching 1,000. I'd really like to do some special little video when we hit a thousand subscribers, but quite frankly, I'm at a loss at what I can do. And no, I'm not going to give away my Porsche. But if you have any ideas of something I can do or something you'd like to see me do for that thousand subscriber special, let me know down in the comments below. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, go on down there, find that subscribe button, give it a click. I promise it's not scary at all. And when you do subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell next to it. That turns on YouTube's notification system and they will let you know every time that I post new content from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.